I'm Lisa Tokes. I'm at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and I'd like to introduce my colleague here. Hi, I'm, I'm Brendan Z. Uh, I'm Lisa's student, and I also work at Scripps Oceanography. Um, and I'll be uh, showing you how to use the Magic Database and also PMagPy software today. So if you want to direct yourself to start with to earthref.org slash magic. This is the magic splash page. Um, and we're going to be using this later, but this is where you'll be uploading all your data at the end of this. And this is where we'll download data to use for today. Um, magic, if you don't know, is a fair repository for PaleoMag data. So uh, a lot of paper publishers are sort of promoting that we use this and publish in this when we publish our papers. So uh, this is a good place to put your data. From here, uh, what we want to use today is the PMAGPI software. So if you look on this page, uh, there's sort of these three main places, but what we actually want to look at is this magic resources area. And there's a link to the PMAGPI software here. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And I'm going to go over to the PMAGPI cookbook. And this is the cookbook which tells you how to use the PMAGPI software. There's a lot of detailed information here. Um, and the first thing that we're going to want to do is to install the PMAGPI software. So there's sort of a few options for doing this. So if you want to use the GUIs that we're using today, you can download them as standalone pro programs. However, these are less frequently updated and they have less features than the full install, which is what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, what I recommend is using pip to download and install a PMAGPI function library and the GUIs and the command line programs. Um, and so if you want to do that, we're going to scroll down to section 1.2 which is the full PMAGPI install and update. And there'll be three options here, depending on your operating system. They're similar, and I'll go over the differences between them. Uh, I'm on Mac OS at the moment, so I'm going to use this OSX PIP link to look at what I should be doing for OSX. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is install Anaconda Python. Um, so this is for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And I'll just show you the website here. Uh, this is a sort of package set of Python. It's a package manager for Python that comes with a few packages pre-installed. And there's a download button here that you can use. Um, and it'll sort of automatically do it for your operating system. You can see if there's one for all three operating systems here. Um, I already have Anaconda Python installed, so I'm not going to do this. Um, but I, what I don't have is I don't have a special environment for PMAGPI. So I'm going to create an environment for PMAGPI and install these packages into it. Um, so an environment in Anaconda is basically sort of a controlled area with a set of packages that are controlled that sort of allow you to use PMAGPI without breaking any other packages you might have installed on your system for a different project. So I'm going to do that today. So the first thing that you're going to have to do to do this is you're going to have to open your command line, um, which on a Mac is just a program called Terminal. And you can search for that using your search bar. Um, on Linux, you probably know how to use the terminal uh, if you use Linux already, but there'll be a way of getting it up. And on Windows, um, actually, you don't want to use the default Windows terminal to do this because it doesn't recognize Conda commands. But when you, when you install Anaconda Python, you will have a program installed called Anaconda Prompt. And that will allow you to use all of these commands as if you were on Mac or Linux. Um, and so just use the Anaconda Prompt program to do this. Um, so I am going to create a new Anaconda environment um, using my terminal. So I'm going to copy each of these commands 
and just use them in my terminal. And I'm going to activate this environment when it's done. This might take a, a little while to install all of these. We can't see your terminal. You can't see my terminal. Okay. Um, let me share my desktop then. I think I'm sharing the window. There, does that share this? Yes, there we go. Okay, now you can probably see Zoom. Um, and so all I did is I copied this command. And now I just press yes every time it asks me to continue. And now it's just installing all of these uh, packages. Um, and then the next two commands, this installs pip, which is another package manager. Uh, and this just installs uh, Python wget, which I guess it wants to install this in a different way. Um, so you just need to copy and paste each of these four commands into your terminal. Now we're going to just test my Python. So first we want to test this using, uh, we're gonna type Python. We also type which Python. This gives me something slightly different to this, but um, it's, you know, uh, similar. Uh, what we don't want to see is, you know, Python 2 being installed. So 3.7 is probably what we want to see. Um, now, next thing to do is to install pmagpy. I already have pmagpy installed, although I'm not sure whether it will work in this environment or not. So let's uh, test it. Um, yeah. So let's see whether this works. Um, otherwise, I would have to do these commands to install pmagpy. Um, and there's sort of a little bit of information for troubleshooting as well. So, because I already have pmagpy installed, I'm going to just get to this set. So from pmagpy import pmag, that's my test. And that seems to have worked. And, well, that's it. Yes, OK. Um, so I'm going to copy this, actually. Um, into my terminal. That should work. And it gives me 30.5906, which is correct. So PMAGPI is successfully installed. I didn't have to do. You might want to explain what angle is. It's the angle between so, two directions. Yeah. So this is an angle between two different directions. And so the test cases worked in this case. Um, so I've already got PMAGPI installed, but you would use these commands. And so I think uh, the only thing in here that is very, very important to remember is that if you want to upgrade PMAGPI, you need to use this other pip install command. So it's going to be pip install PMAGPI dash dash upgrade dash dash no depths. And that will allow you to upgrade it. So now let's go back to the cookbook and let's look at how to use the GUIs for the five. So chapter three tells you about how to use PMAG GUI. And to open PMAG GUI, you're going to open your command prompt and start PMAG GUI with the appropriate command. So if you installed using pip, like we told you to, um, it will be this command if you're on Mac or Linux, and it will be just PMAG GUI if you're on Windows. For me, I installed it using a developer install, so I'm going to use the command PMAG GUI .py, but aside from that, it's the same. And so I already have things in a folder, but it let, starts you up by letting you choose a folder that you're going to work in. And so 
we're going to start by working in this 2022 EGU short course folder. Uh, so I'm going to open that up and I will be presented with a page that looks like this. So there's a lot of things going on here. So the way that the GUI is presented is in three stages. So the first stage is to get your data into the GUI. So there's an option for converting magnetometer files to the magic format. Um, in this case, we're not going to be doing that, but I'll just show you what that looks like. So if you want to convert files to the magic format, what you do is you can choose your file format here, and there's a list of things that you can use to convert from, basically different magnetometers. Um, if your format that you use is not listed here, then you might have to convert your files into something known as the generic format. And or, or ask us to, to make a special um, conversion tool for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's some documentation on this format uh, mm -hmm. on the PMAGPI website. But if you're, yeah, if you want to ask us to make a conversion tool, feel free. Um, so I'm going to cancel this because we don't have data files right now. We're going to download some from Magic. So this is what your generic format looks like. And uh, there's some more documentation on what the supported files are here if you want to get your data into the PMAC. Um, so I'm going to skip through this for now. Uh, but there's a lot of documentation in this section, which is 3.1 in the cookbook. So um, I'm now going to go down actually to a little way down. So don't worry about this, but go to section 3.7, which is on downloading data from magic. So if I go back to our magic splash page, we can search the interface for data. So that's what I'm going to do here. So here's my uh, sort of database here. So this is the magic database sort of search function. You can use this to search through um, a set of data, you know, any data set, and you do that by Dewey. Um, there's also a load of different things that you can use to search for here. So you can use publication year, you can use, uh, you know, ages, paleo intensity value, um, lithology, all sorts of things. So this is very helpful if you're looking to search for some data that you want to use in an analysis. But for today, we're going to be looking for a particular study. So we can go on here and we can search for any data that we want. But I have this Dewey of a publication that I want to use. So I'm going to go into PMAG GUI and I'm going to go download or unpack magic text file. And I'm going to go download from magic. So here I can paste in my Dewey of my study that I want to download data from. And then I can press OK, and it should download this. OK. Um, so now we've got it downloaded. And now I can go to DMAG GUI or Tellier GUI, depending on what the data type is. So for this data, these are directional data. So I want to use DMAG GUI. OK, um, so the first thing that you'll see is you'll see that you have a Zydewald plot, an equal area plot, and a plot of magnetization against AF field or temperature, depending on how you demagnetize your sample. Um, the first thing that you probably want to change on here is that you want to change the coordinate system from specimen coordinates to geographic coordinates, uh, which will be a lot more helpful to look at if you're trying to do a directional analysis. Um, the second thing that you might want to ch 
change here is if you want to see results from a different specimen, you can use this drop down menu and you can select whichever one you want. So, for example, I can select here SB02B2, for example, and that will give me this plot here. Um, if I want to uh, go just from the previous one to the next one, I can do this. So this is, you know, uh, just takes me from the previous specimen to the next one. Um, and if I want to sort of select a particular range of temperatures manually that I might want to get a direction from, for example, from here, I might want to go from 400 to 550 degrees, if, that, if we think that that's an appropriate thing. Um, I think I have to do add fit. And then I can go from that range of temperatures, for example. Um, in DMAG GUI, when you import data from MAGIC, uh, the interpretations that were previously used should be saved. So for example, if I go to a site that has interpretations already, let's look at SB18. Um, a set of interpretations that we used for this will be saved. So from this one, it was 40 to 180 millitesla was used for the interpretation. Um, and I think that you can display the site beam as well. So if I wanted to look um, at what the site mean was done, what, what site mean was used, uh, I can do that here in this mean options. That's not showing up. Yeah. There we go. And yeah, okay. Um, fit one, all, all. Yeah. So we have to change this thing to all, which shows all of the fits that were done where we can add a new fit to these if we want to. So for example, if I wanted to add a second fit to this, I could add something called fit two, and I could go instead of 40 from 30, for example, and that's not gonna change things very much. But in this case, let's, and then we can, you know, sort by the mean of fit one or by fit two. So uh, Brendan, you've got auto save on. So okay. that whatever you do gets saved automatically. Yes, so I'll take that off. But um, this is an option. So whatever you do gets saved automatically if you have auto save enabled. Um, and so, yeah. So we can also add different bits. So in this case, these data are from the San Francisco Volcanics, uh, TOGS 2003. Uh, and the Dewey reference, I think we can probably release with this video. Um, if you want to try it with this Dewey for yourselves. Um, so in this case... Um, One more thing. Yeah. Um, uh, go back to your main page. You've got east equals x on east instead of x equals north. Yes, so we can change this as well. Yeah, so show them how to do that. So we can have x be north. And then in that case, we end up with a Zydevolt plot that looks like this. And that changes our Zydevolt plot. So these data are from Tokes et al. 2003. Uh, and this is a data set from the San Francisco volcanic, Volcanics, where when they sampled this site, uh, they found a stump that had been hit by lightning. And so a lot of these specimens have two component magnetizations and the second component is probably an IRM that's caused by a lightning strike. So for these things, it's not unreasonable that we could use a planar fit to these data. And so if I wanted to do that, I could add a fit like this. So this would be fit two for these data. And in this case, we would choose a plane um, and so we've got a bunch of other options like line, line anchored, line with origin. But in this case, we're going to do a plane fit. And I'm going to zoom back in on this. And so what this will do is it will take the plane that encompasses all of these data. <clears throat> and you can see that um, this goes sort of 
right through where the site level fit does. So if I actually show <clears throat> with my mean options, I show Fisher by, by planes. Um, I think you can, there's a way of showing the planes themselves, isn't there? Try all. Try all. There we go. So now you now I've sort of got this plane of fit, uh, and it's showing all of the planes. Um, so that's something else that you can do with DMEC. We can uh, <clears throat> sort of add, add in new fits. So if I want to save one of these fits, I'm just going to press save. And that will save the specimen interpretations to a file called dmagui.redo. And so whenever we want to sort of reload these interpretations, we can import interpretations from a redo file. Okay. So if I want to save these fits to my tables, to my magic tables, which is what we're going to upload to the database, we have to go to file and save magic tables. However, in this case, I don't want to change this data set. So I'm not going to do that. So let's close this down. And I'm going to give me a warning that I haven't saved these fits in the magic tables, but that's OK. OK. So I'm just going to press OK and not save it. And now we're back in the main PMAG GUI page. And the next thing I'm going to show you is if we have any missing metadata that we need to add before we upload to magic, um, I'm going to press this button three here. And this will allow us to add data to the magic tables. And this will sort of bring up a new window. So here's the thing that you'll see first when you open up your um, edit metadata. Um, it's a list of the columns in each of uh, the tables that magic uses for its data structure. So to so sort of talk about these tables, um, a site in magic is something that called in the same field. So it could be a single lava flow or a piece of pottery. A sample is something that you collect by hand. So it could be sort of a, a single core that you drill. And a specimen is something that you measure. So it could be a piece of that core if you then subsample that core. Um, so this is a list of different uh, column headers that you would have in each of these tables. Um, and some of these are required for uploads of magic, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, if you want to add a column, you can select one from below. Like analysts, you can. Yes, so if you want to add a column for this, you could add one called analysts, for example, and you can add that in here. Okay. But for today, we're not gonna have an analysts column, so I'm going to remove that. Okay. What if you wanted to change one of these things? Say, for example, something in here is wrong. So what if this was not uh, a lava flow? It was something else. Then we can go through and we can click on this column, uh, on this cell, rather. And then there's sort of a controlled vocabulary for geologic types in magic. So we can go through and we can say, OK, Actually, it wasn't a lava flow. It was, I don't know, uh, a tub, for example. Uh, and that will add lava flow. So yeah, you want to clear cell of all values first or delete it. You double click, you can edit it manually. Um, but what we might want is to get a tub. And then we can add as many of these things as we want. So we could say tough, but also, you know, uh, could also be, I don't know, a tough and a lava flow. Because maybe you took part of a tough and part of a lava flow that was the same age as the tough or something like that. Um, and then you've got similarly lithologies, geologic classes, we can change these two if we want to. But right now I'm going to clear the cell of all values and go back to a lava flow because in fact this was a lava flow. Or you could um, add extrusive to the igneous 
classes. Absolutely. So, and you can edit all of them. I can, yes. So if I do this, edit all, then I can add extrusive to all of these. Yeah. For example. And that's, so that's, that's a correct. reasonable thing to do because all of these are lava flows. So they are all it's extrusive igneous rocks. All right. So this is for the specimens data. Now I can go save and continue. And that will save the, the changes that I made to this. And it will go through each of the tables in turn. So now it's time for the samples table. And I can do the same thing here. So I can edit, you know, uh, all of these and they should all be igneous extrusive, for example. And I'll do that again. And then in the site um, data. Um, just to be clear, you only need to do that at the site level. Yes. Okay. Just, I don't know. So I could have just edited this at the site level. Mm -hmm. if I wanted to, and then it would propagate that down to all the specimens. So here it is, it gets extrusive. All right. And I'll save and continue. And then we've got our locations here. So for some reason, there's three locations called San Francisco Volcanics, but that's because they have different ages. So these are all the San Francisco Volcanics, but they have different age interpretations for each of these groupings of our lava flows. Um, so that's uh, where we are here. And I'm not gonna edit anything here. I'm gonna save and continue. And then here are our ages. This is our age table. And these are, are the age estimates that we've got um, from each of these. Um, and again, I don't want to edit anything here. So I'm going to save and continue. But if you wanted to add things to this, then you can. So now I'm going to close out of this. Next, we want to make sure that we're able to upload our data to Magic. Um, and to do that, we need to validate our data. Um, and so what we want to do here is we want to press create magic txt file for upload. So I'm going to press this. And it should work. And it should say you are ready to upload. However, if you aren't ready to upload, it will give you uh, a list of things in your terminal went wrong and it will let you uh, edit your uh, metadata again. So it will give you sort of an option to open each one of those tables again and change those things. Um, and so next, the next thing that it will tell you is to go to Magic for uploading. So if I need to upload data into my private workspace, um, it will tell me to do this. You can also access this from the main magic splash page if I go back um, using this upload tool button. So to upload, um, you need to have an Earthref account. So if you want to have an Earthref account, you can join earthref.org and you're going to need to log in with ORCID. Um, so you'll need to create an ORCID profile if you don't have one of those already. Otherwise, you can use your ORCID profile to log in to Magic. Um, but I, I already have a Magic account, so I'm going, or an Earthrep account. So I'm going to log in using that account. Um, so I will do that. Um, so I'm going to log in with my ORCID. And OK, so now I'm logged in with my Earthrep account. 
and I can, okay. And now that I'm logged in, I can go back to the upload page. So I'm just going to hit here and go to the upload tool. So now that you're on the page, um, you can uh, click and select a file to upload. So I'm going to go and open up my directory here that I had my file saved into. And I'm going to open this one called San Francisco Volcanic 17th May 2022-3, which is the most recent version of this that I created. So when I upload this, it's going to go through and validate and make sure that everything works. And you can see that it says red and there's no errors in this case. If there are errors, it will tell you there are and it will show you how to deal with them. Um, so now we're going to go to step three, which is to upload. And what you want to do to start with is rather than uploading to, well, you can't upload to the database yourself straight away. So what you upload to is uh, a private contribution. So you can call this contribution, let's call it San Francisco Volcanics. Um, and we can upload this to a new private contribution called San Francisco Volcanics. So the useful thing about this is a private contribution is something that you can provide a link to. It doesn't appear publicly on the magic website. However, if you have, say, for example, a paper that you are submitting, um, you can upload your data to this private workspace and then share them in your paper. You can share a link to this private contribution. Uh, and so effectively, you can store your data in the database. And then when it goes, when your paper gets published, you can make your data go live in the magic database. So this is a nice sort of private area where you can put your data and only share them with people that you want to. Uh, and so, okay, so there's one thing that needs to be changed in here. So that is uh, the lab that was used. And you also need the studies Dewey. Same. So I'm gonna save this, the lab that was in. And then the last thing is that you need the studies Dewey. Um, and so if I wanted to, validate this, although it's not changed at all from the original paper. And just in case, because you know I made some new interpretations, I'm not going to change this from the original paper. Um, but you know we could paste in the studies Dewey and you know save that. Um, and so this is just a description of the changes that are being made. So you can press validate. Um, okay, so it'll say validation passed successfully. So everything in here was correct. So now, if you want to, if you then want to publish this, which I'm not going to, just in case we changed anything in here. Also, you can't because you're not a co-author. Yes. And it's so, I, it's I own that. Okay, so you could press publish. However, because I'm not a co-author. I can't republish this data. So you have to be listed as a co-author on the paper. No, let, let, me, let me be clear. Okay. You, you could, if I had never uploaded this before. Okay. You could publish it. Um, but then if I thought you made a mistake, I would have the right to override it. Okay. So the owner is the database team, you know, or the author. Um, has rights over the data. But if you wanted to upload somebody else's data, you can, if there is no contribution. Yeah. So you can't override an existing contribution if you're not the author. But if no one's uploaded it before, then you can. Yeah. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to publish anything because I don't want to, you know, reinterpret this data in any way. Uh, mm -hmm. just in case, you know, any of the changes that we made did get saved. Um, but that's how you do things. And so uh, often, you know, this won't 
work the first time. There will be some stuff that you'll need to validate, but at every step of the process, um, it will show you how to do something, how to change things. Um, so at the stage where you create the magic.txt file, there's a validation that goes on there and it will tell you what you need. And also when you upload and do that validation step, it will tell you if there are issues that need to be fixed in your data file there too. Um, and once everything's validated, you will be able to publish it using this button. All right. Anything else that we want to you want to say, Lisa? Yeah, you just say you need a valid DOI. So once your paper is accepted and you have a valid DOI, you can yeah. publish it. But yeah. you can't publish it without a valid DOI. Yeah. Because only published data go into Magic. Yeah. So the DOI is required. However, um, you can share data that's in this stage in your private uh, workspace. Yeah, um, show how that works. So you press share and you and can share a link to your private contribution um, from here. Put, and you put that into your acknowledgements. Yes. So you can, put this, you can put this into your paper and this is useful if you want to share data before a paper has been published because you can't put this publicly into the database until you have a do. That's what this said. Yeah. All right. So... That will show you how to upload a contribution to Magic. Um, if you have any more interest in the PMAGPI software um, or Magic in general, there's a few tabs or a few things that can help you here. So I'm just going to go back to the main Magic page. So. Along here, there are some useful links, especially about the magic data model, the method codes, the vocabulary lists used in the magic data structure. Um, if we go back to the PMAGPI cookbook, there's more info on other programs that are in PMAGPI. There's more than just the GUIs that we showed you today that you may find useful for analysis of your data. Um, there's there's a functions. There's a place with Jupyter Notebooks, which might be another useful place if you're experienced with Python for using these different functions uh, that are sort of talked about in the notebook. So I can go on this and it will sort of show you. Uh, there's a Jupyter Hub server, which means that you can run these uh, sort of online without having to use your own computer. Um, and this has some examples for you to start using uh, the sort of PMAGPI functions. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is the YouTube channel. So this link takes you to the Magic YouTube channel. And that will be where this video is uploaded after EGU. Um, so you can view it on there. Uh, and you might be, we might be sharing it on there already. but. Um, that's where you'll be able to view it in future, just in case we're not. Um, all right, thank you very much for watching. Um, and yeah, hope to see some contributions in magic from all of you in the future. Thanks.